I would like also to thank the, the organizers uh, for hosting this event, especially Daniel MacArthur uh, for making this happen, uh, despite the difficulties of the, of the ongoing pandemic. I would like to thank all the, the colleagues and, and people attending this event today and apologies for, uh, for not joining uh, the previous sessions, but it's been a really busy week, a really busy year uh, uh, for, the, for the center. So therefore, uh, please accept my apologies. Uh, as Paolo said, the, my presentation today is the Greek Freemasons and the Megali Vea, the Armonia Lodge at uh, Constantinople. Um, the, the period preceding the, the victory of the Kemalist forces and, and the Asia Minor catastrophe of September 1922 uh, constitutes a turning point for the history of the ecumenical patriarchy of Constantinople and, and the Orthodox Greeks uh, of, of the Ottoman capital because it stigmatized both as, as enemies of the country and to a significant degree obstructed uh, their normal incorporation into Turkish society after 1923. Now, um, the aim of my paper today is to provide an overview of the open and overt uh, political identification uh, of the cosmopolitan Greek religious and lay leaderships uh, with Eleutherios Venizelos and the Greek Redentist plan of the Megali Vea, the great idea. And that identification had two major uh, consequences. Uh, the first one, which is closer to these events, uh, was the serious political class between uh, the Venizelis Constantinople uh, against the royalist Athens, uh, especially uh, after the elections of November 1920, when um, a royalist government uh, was established in Greece and King Constantine uh, returned to the throne. Uh, the long-term consequences, obviously, is what I referred before, was the stigmatization of uh, the Constantinopolitan Greeks and the Ecumenical Patriarchate. Um, in uh, in post-1923, Turkish public discourse was the result of uh, that open support of, of Greek nationalism in Istanbul. Uh, within this context I described, um, I will try to explore a rather unknown aspect of the power struggle between Venizelis Constantinople and Royalist um, Athens during this period, and that is the role of the Constantinopolitan Greek uh, Freemasons, and especially the Lodge uh, Armonia. Uh, let me see, does it change now? Da, da, da. Hmm, okay. Right. So uh, the Lodge Armonia, uh, the number 44 is the registration number of the Lodge. Uh, right, so I'll go back uh, just to set up a bit the context prior to 1919. Um, the Young Turk Revolution of, of July 1908, as we know, is considered a defining moment in the history of the Ottoman Empire because it signified the beginning of the political radicalization of both Muslims and non-Muslims and the formation of a framework of, of violent and mutually exclusive nationalism, which eventually resulted in the Greek Turkish War of 1919, 1922 and the creation of the new Republic of Turkey. Uh, on a political level, as we know, the, uh, the revolution resulted in the uh, emergence of two uh, competing political uh, uh, fractions, uh, the unionists and the liberals. But something similar happened also with the other uh, millets of, of the empire, including the, the Greek Orthodox millet, the Rum uh, And um, the the ethnocentric circles of, um, of the Greek Orthodox community uh, were expressed by the Society of Constantinople. The Society of Constantinople was an organization, a secret organization, uh, established in the Ottoman capital in 1908, a bit after the revolution, by Athanasios Liotis Nikolaidis, you see him down on, uh, on the right. Uh, he was uh, an officer of, of the Greek army who had fought in the Macedonian struggle. And Neon Dragoumis, you see him on the left, um, a member of a prominent Greek family and a diplomat in Constantinople. And um, uh, as the name uh, suggests, the Society of, of Constantinople um, expressed the ethnocentric circles, the, the, the self-proclaimed ethnic key or ethnic offerings, nationals or nationalists, you can call them either way. And they believe that the, um, the implementation of a political program along the lines of, of equality and Ottoman brotherhood uh, would strengthen the Greek ethnic identity and autonomy of the Rum community. In fact, both men, both uh, Suliotis Nikolaidis and Dragoumis, uh, had, had expressed uh, views in favor of the Hellenization of the Ottoman state uh, from within. 
the members of, of the Society of Constantinople uh, belong mostly to the middle class uh, of, uh, of the Constantinopolitan Greek uh, community. Uh, because they felt that uh, after the revolution, uh, they would have some access to the power uh, uh, that uh, belonged before to the higher uh, social strata. Um, the Society of Constantinople was supported by the, uh, the majority of the Greek-speaking press in Constantinople, uh, as well as the Greek diplomatic authorities in Constantinople and Smyrna. Now, uh, the interesting part is at the same time, we have also uh, the establishment of, um, of the Lodge Harmonia. Uh, on 21 December 1908, a Greek of prominent cosmopolitan Greeks, uh, headed by the Dr. Yordanis Zerafoglu, in the picture, he's the one standing on the left, um, uh, addressed an official petition to the Serene Grand Orient Lodge of Athens to establish their own lodge in Constantinople under the jurisdiction of the Athenian Lodge. Um, the, the permission was officially granted uh, by the great general secretary of the Serene Grand Orient, Orient in, in Athens, uh, Kefalas, and uh, the lodge was officially founded in Constantinople on 14 January 1909. Uh, the, the Lodge's dictum uh, was uh, very um, compatible with the ambience in the Ottoman capital at the time. Uh, it was uh, freedom, equality, fraternity, which resonated a lot with uh, the messages, the political messages of uh, the uh, revolution. Um, it's interesting that, again, uh, the, the members of, uh, the founding members of, uh, of the Lodge belong to the middle class. We had three doctors three lawyers, two merchants, one professor, one ship owner, and one constructor. Uh, what, what's even more interesting is that seven of the 11 founders of the Lodge Harmonia were also members of the Society of Constantinople. Heraklis Sidoridis, Nikolaos Iglesias Kefalineos, Menelaos Labiris, Panagiotis Bekes, um, Alexandros Pantazis, Carolos or Charles Charlton, and Jordanis uh, Zerahoglu. Furthermore, Alexandros Pantazis, one of the founders, uh, was the owner of the printing house Anatoly, where the Society of Constantinople printed the newspaper uh, political, uh, political theorisis, um, each official mouthpiece. So therefore, we realize that it's a network created uh, during this period between Constantinople and Athens uh, that links together the Society of Constantinople, the Armonia Lodge, and uh, the middle uh, class uh, of the Constantinopolitan Greeks, uh, at, the, at the time. And this, is, this should not come as a surprise. Um, both uh, founders of the Society of Constantinople were also Freemasons. Dragoumis uh, belonged to the Lodge Megas Alexandros of Egypt, whereas Julius Nikolaevis belonged to the, the Lodge Kenderbe uh, of the Seren Orient in, in Athens. Now, we need to uh, point something out that uh, the Lodge Harmonia was not the first Lodge uh, where um, you have Greek Orthodox um, uh, members. Um, in the mid-19th century, you have the Lodge Provos uh, under Cleanthes Calieris. But this is the first time we have um, a Lodge uh, which is um, uh, it's, it's composed by pre predominantly by, by members of the Rome community. And uh, the Lodge Harmonia, along with the Society of Constantinople, uh, support uh, Greek national ideology in the Ottoman capital, support the activities of uh, the nationals or nationalists uh, in, in the Ottoman capital. Uh, they're very active between the period 1908-1912. Then with the beginning of the Balkan Wars and the change in the leadership of the community, they go under the radar, so to speak, which brings us uh, to the main dish, so to speak, of my presentation to the period of, um, uh, of the occupation of uh, the Ottoman capital. Uh, so let's see how Armonia dealt with the uh, ideal uh, accomplishment of, of greater uh, Greece. Uh, in October 1918, a few days before the signing of the Mudos Armistice, Patria Kermanos was uh, forced to resign by the supporters of Greek nationalism. And immediately after the, his overthrow and the election of the Metropolitan of Crusa, uh, Dorothos Mamelis, as locum tenens of the Ecumenical Throne in October 1918, uh, the members of the Holy Synod and all the national councillors of the Permanent National Mixed Council, the governing body of, of the community, uh, were, repl were replaced by uh, supporters of the Megali there. Now, the main objective of, of the new leadership became the severance of the community's ties with the Ottoman authorities 
and the systematic manifestation of their desire for unification enosis with Greece. Breaking ties with the port served the aims of the Greek Prime Minister, Eleftherios Venizelos, who advised the religious and lay leadership of the Greek Orthodox Milet to ignore the Ottoman government and explicitly instructed them to organize meetings and send signed petitions to the Peace Conference in Paris, stating uh, the popular desire for national redemption and union. At the same time, alienated by the nationalizing measures of the unionist regime and disillusioned by the compliant policies of the previous clerical leadership, uh, the popular masses also identified with um, Eleftherios Venizelos and, and Greek nationalism. And the Greek, um, uh, uh, Greek intelligentsia supported and reinforced Greek national feeling in the capital. Now, all these coordinated efforts uh, resulted in the official resolution for union of the unredeemed Hellenism uh, with motherland Greece, signed on 16 March 1919 um, uh, by the Constantinopolitan Greeks who gathered in the temples of the city. And uh, they signed the following petition, and I quote, the Greek people of Constantinople and the suburbs, after gathering today in the temples, the only places where they could freely assemble throughout the spirit of tyranny, proclaim their unwavering will to gain their complete national reinstatement and consider union with Mother Greece as the only firm basis for the natural development in the future and for the avoidance of further new implications in the Near East and are determined to resist with all their powers to any other solution. They ask and entrust the ecumenical patriarchate, the supreme national authority, to communicate the present resolution to the representatives of Britain, France, Italy, the United States and Greece at the peace conference. Nonetheless, Venizelos' loss in the elections of 1st November 1920, just a few months after the uh, triumphant signing of the Treaty of Serbia in August 1920, was a turning point for the policy of the Venizelos leadership of the Cosmopolitan Greeks. In November 1920, the Committee of National Defense, uh, Epitropi Ethnikis Arminis, was formed in Constantinople with the aim to undertake a propaganda against King Constantine and the new government, and with the support of Venizelos, lead a movement for the creation of an autonomous government in Smyrna, the creation of, as they called it, an Ionian state, an Ionico uh, Kratos. And this became very intense, especially after the referendum uh, for the return of King Constantine to Athens. Uh, and this is where, again, the Armonia Lodge becomes very active. Andreas Adipas, the gentleman up on the right, he was the head of the Armonia Lodge, uh, but also he had uh, he he was a combination of of uh, had a combination uh, of titles. He was the head of the Greek mission of of um, of the Red Cross in Constantinople, and at the same time a prominent member of the Committee of National Defense. Um, and he wrote to Konstantinos Agelopoulos, the head of the Athenian Lodge, in August 1921, referring to the issue of Constantine. And I quote: "In our opinion." The only cause of our national calamities is our isolation and the conversion of the friendship and alliance of the victorious powers into disfavor and indifference. The return of King Constantine to the throne resulted in the contempt of world opinion. King Constantine should have been in Athens only if Germany had been victorious. The Lord's Armonia is convinced that every day spent with King Constantine on the throne can only bring new calamities to Hellenism and new losses from the foundations of our national edifice. Therefore, we see here, uh, he takes an open position to the constitutional issue and to the issue of, of the national schism supporting Venizelos um, in this case. Um, the, after Dorothius' death uh, and the election of the Venizelist Meletus Metaxakis as patriarch in December 1921, the Committee of National Defense uh, approached uh, General Anastasios Papoulas, the Commander-in-Chief of the Greek Army in Asia Minor, and Aristides Sergiadis, the Greek High Commissioner at Smyrna, in order to explore whether they would support a separatist movement in Smyrna for the creation of an Ionian state. According to the plan submitted by the committee and Andreas Adipas uh, to Papoulas on 21 February 1922, the evacuation of Asia Minor by the Greek army would have disastrous effects on the Greek Orthodox populations who would be exposed to the persecution of the Turks. Only a movement heading by Papoulas could unite the Venizelis and the Royalists within the army and allow them to face the threat. While a mass meeting would be held in Smyrna so as to surround the Greek commander-in-chief with a necessary vote of confidence in order to proceed to the foundation of the Ionian state, Venizelis would be appointed as the delegate of the newly founded state to Paris and London. 
The committee would inform the Greek powers in an effort to gain their support, arguing that it could already count on the positive stance of Britain. The Greek communities of the Ottoman Empire, especially Constantinople and Smyrna, America, Europe and Egypt, would also be invited to contribute to the cause with their money and blood. However, nothing came out of these negotiations, despite Papoulas' willingness to lead the whole operation and the efforts of Adipas and the Committee of National Defense and the Patriarchate to maintain a more moderate stance towards the royalist regime, the Greek government on two occasions rejected the plan on the grounds of the exceptionally difficult diplomatic, financial and military obstacles. Now, the failure of, of the separatist plan uh, destabilized the Venizelis in Constantinople who were in desperate need of political orientation. In, uh, in June 1922, Agelopoulos wrote uh, to Adipas uh, uh, in, in a kind of a brotherly manner within the lodges, and I quote, from 1st November 1920 onwards, you were occupied by a Venizelis hatred against the free people of Greece who have an absolute right to decide how they want to be governed. Thus, you present yourselves not as free Greek nations who calmly think about the new situation, but as party leaders aiming at the domination of one party, even with foreign help. My dear Adipas, you must agree with me that patriotism is not the monopoly of the, Greek, of the Greeks of Constantinople. I think it's time to forget all that and become aware of the fact that all Greeks, but especially the Freemasons, ought to align our efforts to the efforts of the official state with only one aim, the fruition of our holy and great desires of our race. Um, Adipas, in his response shows that he perceived uh, Gelopoulos' letters as patronizing, uh, and he wrote, referring both to the uh, ecumenical patriarch Metaxakis, but also to the situation in Asia Minor um, on the 28th of June of uh, 1922. And I quote, first of all, it is not Masonic to contemptuously call the patriarch of the Greek race as Metaxakis. Contempt for the patriarch equals with contempt to the unredeemed Greeks. He rose to the highest office of the hierarchy because of his patriotism, his ethos, and his Christian and Masonic moderation. Here we have the first information that Meletos Metaxakis was also a member of the Masonic Lodge Harmonia. The unredeemed Greeks have enough political experience and do not need outside advice and proposals. The feeling of self-preservation keeps us close to the Venizelist ideology, the ideology of Antant. And then he makes it personal by saying, my 19-year-old only son is fighting with the Greek army at Sagarius for the past two years. Where is my Venizelist mania now? But no, I'm wrong. At this point, you're right, because the great Venizelos told us to reinforce the front when your idols were ready to surrender even Athens to the Turks and the Bulgarians while we were fighting at the Macedonian, during our struggle at the Macedonian front. So therefore, we see that Adipas remains Venizelist uh, and we see that political class between Athens and Constantinople reaching also uh, the, uh, the inner circles of uh, the Freemason lodges. Uh, and to conclude, uh, the collapse of the Asia Minor Front, the burning of Smyrna, uh, the tragic death of Metropolitan Chrysostomos in the hands of the Turkish mob, and the atrocities committed against the non muslim population of the city shocked and terrified the Constantinopolitan Greeks. The supporters of Greek nationalism were the first to flee the city and seek refuge in Greece. Amongst them were also the members of the lodge Harmonia, who um, uh, established another lodge in Athens. Andreas Adipas was among the people who established the Byzantine Lodge of Athens, uh, which uh, exists even today. Uh, Patriarch Meletius uh, followed suit a year later and eventually stepped down from the Ecumenical throne on 15 October 1923 under pressure from Venizelos himself. Now, the minority who remained in Turkey had to face a number of challenges. Stigmatized as a deviant and threatening outgroup and abandoned by their leadership, they had to face the consequences of the political choices of the FANAR and the Committee of National Defense, and at the same time, adjust the new conditions created after the sign of the Lausanne Treaty. Just an asterisk to this conclusion, Andreas Adipas um, was a member of the Greek delegation uh, that uh, pushed for the um, uh, for the recognition of the rights of the Constantinopolitan of the Greeks of the islands of Imbros and Tenedos because he was from Tenedos, uh, and once he moved to Greece, uh, he was a very well-known surgeon. 
um, he was uh, he became part of the of the upper uh, social strata of of the Athenian society, um, and he died in Athens in in 1950. Uh, thank you uh, so much for your attention.